Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a multiple regression analysis. Uh, I've already uploaded a video that's a brief video based on this analysis, so if you're only interested in watching the real bare bones basic analysis of doing uh, multiple regression and SPSS, you might consider watching that video. In this video, I'm going to go into more depth because multiple regression is quite a sophisticated technique and there are a number of features to it. Uh, so in this an example, I've got real data here, and there uh, the data correspond to the same data I did a principal components analysis on, uh, which is the premium discount and percentage uh, associated with an, uh, nine listed investment company stocks. So these stocks trade at a particular price, and that price at times deviates from its underlying net asset value, and sometimes it's negative, which gives a negative percentage, uh, as in this case here. But in other times, it's positive. Like for ARG, it's positive. And the question I'm I'm wanting to answer in this uh, multiple regression analysis is whether I can predict um, the largest listed investment company on the Australian Stock Exchange, which is AFI. I want to use the other listed investment company discount premium values across time from 2003 to 2010. I want to see if I can predict with a high level of accuracy the listed investment company discount premium associated with AFI. Now these data could be any data so long as they're measured on a continuous interval ratio scale. Now that's in multiple regression that's particularly true for the dependent variable that you want to be an interval ratio scale, that means continuous. Uh, but the independent variables in this analysis are also interval ratio continuous variables, but you could include dichotomous variables in a multiple regression analysis if they're the independent variables. Uh, so to do this analysis, uh, go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, now, my dependent variable, there's only one space for one variable, and it's AFI. I'm going to put that in there because I'm trying to predict AFI's variability in listed in uh, discount premium values across time. Now, the independent variables are all the other remaining uh, listed investment companies, which for which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I'm going to put them into this independent blocks independent box and it's block one of one and I'm gonna keep it there you only use uh, changes you only use this option of going from block one of one to block two uh, or block one of two yeah adding another block in hierarchical multiple regression I am not doing hierarchical multiple regression I'll do another video for that this is um, uh, not hierarchical this is just plain Jane multiple regression analysis now what you have to note after you include your dependent variable and your independent variable is uh, you want to put into method uh, the method of including or excluding the independent variables in the model. So what we want to do here is build a model with independent variables but we only want statistically significant uh, contributors to the multiple regression equation. So now we have to choose one of four methods to do so. If we use method enter, which is the default, it would just force all the independent variables into the multiple regression equation, irrespective of their statistical significance. Now the alternatives, the most popular alternative I suspect is stepwise. And I'm going to choose that now as a, as a method of uh, determining statistically significant predictors in the equation uh, and uh, what stepwise does very briefly is it looks into the correlation matrix and it chooses the independent variable that has the largest Pearson correlation with the dependent variable and it puts it into a regression analysis and it's called model one and then it goes back to the um, correlation matrix and it looks for the next highest predictor of the dependent variable controlling for variance in the um, first predictor that was included in the model. And so it does that sequentially. It keeps going back to the um, basically the semi-partial correlations uh, and looking for the next biggest predictor of the dependent variable. And then once it finds that it, it has found a non-significant predictor, it stops the analysis. So 
and I'm choosing stepwise, which is the most common. But a lot of there are a lot of critics uh, that with stepwise uh, criticisms and critics uh, with stepwise. But I 